Hey, good day, everybody. Let me just get my volume up a little higher so you can hear me, so I can hear myself. It's a minute to 11. I was excited. I jumped the gun. This is No Brush Required. My name's Tamara Grand, and my co-host, Barbara Reed, will be with me in just a moment. Come on, B.D. Reed. Today, it's beautiful Tuesday here, lots of sunshine. Oh no, are we gonna, oh, there she is. Like a magic. <laughs> it's always magic when it works, isn't it? Oh, I know, I know, and it's, what's the opposite of magic? Uh, 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 a kerfuffle? Uh, no. It's a kerfuffle. <laughs> So I think there's, there is a word that's the opposite of magic, and I can't think of it now. But okay, somebody you know. can somebody can Google it and Google, Google the source it and leave us the comment because now it's going to drive me nuts. And if you don't tell me by the end of the, this, <laughs> I'll be up at three o'clock in the morning and I'll remember. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. It is. It's like it's like when the bad spirits do something versus the good oh. spirits. So oh, okay. Hi, Jinx. No, that's too gentle. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I, I'm just going to take a moment and say thank you to everybody who left me so many lovely, beautiful comments yesterday on my post. It really made my day. And I did try to reply to many of them later in the day because I, I was pretty much offline all day. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if I'll be able to answer them all, but I just, I really, I really appreciate it. You guys made, made me feel so much better. Thank good. you. Good. Well, you deserved all those good comments. It's, it's just nice when people are, yeah. are kind. I appreciate yeah. it. So. The, the good side of social media, right? I think that we have not, with this, we have not ever really experienced the bad side of it. Knock wood. We, well, we have amazing viewers. I know. If you're a meanie, get out. <laughs> <laughs> we have great <laughs> viewers. We have great supporters. We have great guests. Yes. I mean, oh, there she is. Hello, how are you, Brenda? That's our last week's guest. It is. It and is. Brenda, I had somebody um, come up to me yesterday, her first name Karen, I'm not sure what her last name was, and said she watched No Brush Required for the first time last week and really enjoyed it. And I said, Well, that was Brenda McCafferty, was our that guest. That was all, all up to our guest. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank, thank you for coming. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Thank you for, for yes chatting with us. We've always appreciated it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so just before we get into today's guest, uh, any, any news to report? Any, any more I don't know. letters for Jerry Dwarf oh. that's going to show us? I, I don't know. Uh, I, did I, did I know I got into that square foot show last week? Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know. Remember. I can't remember. Yeah. So se um, I'm taking seven seven pieces seven 12 by 12s to the matilda swanson gallery on thursday in stratford one of them i have to just show you because i'm so in love with these this i think i don't know if i showed it last time no it wasn't done last time because you just i think you just but got the stencil like it's freaking awesome it, edges this it so really this, this is gorgeous so that's one of the seven and um yeah, they just got their first coat of varnish. They're going to get their second coat of varnish. Well, they didn't just get their first coat of varnish because if they had it, I'd hold it up. That would be bad. <laughs> That's what I would do. Put my fingers on it. <laughs> um, no, that was several hours ago. But um, when this is done, I will put the second coat on and then they're all set. But yeah, so those are in. I dropped off uh, four little pieces to um, Summer and Grace mm -hmm. uh, last week. And three pieces are going in the um, the Arts Burlington Holiday Market. And I can't remember when that is, but I think it's soon. And then two, my two big pieces, I just dropped off at a local law right. firm, and right. they will have them on display in their board offices, boardroom offices. And I don't have much left at home, <laughs> which is kind of nice. So now I can make new things. That's right. You need a spreadsheet to keep track of all of it. I'm going to send you my spreadsheet. <laughs> I need someone to do it for me. How about you? I know you've got lots going it's on. It's really helpful. 
people, I, I have things out. I would, you know, I've been really fortunate that, that this whole throws, throw spaghetti at the wall yeah. and you, you miss all the shots you don't take sort of philosophy has really panned out this fall. So mm -hmm. I have work out at five different places right now, um, including, including the window exhibition at the Federation uh, Gallery on Bramble Island, which is amazing, right? So yeah. um yeah, I'm kind of like you. I have some pieces that are still around mm -hmm. that, you know, will probably be around for a little while just because I'm tired of pushing them <laughs> and promoting them. Um, but I've been playing around with some new stuff too. And I just, I just gessoed a big 30 by 40 canvas because I'm just feeling the urge to go big again. I'm tired of all these little small things I've been working yeah. on for the last month. So. Yeah, it's like we have to go opposites, right? So I've been doing smalls, which means I'm going to be pulling out one of my big, uh, big canvases soon. <laughs> Show us my spreadsheet. Ha! I have no idea. It's not on my phone. It's on my computer. I have no idea how to do that. That's a little bit too technologically advanced for me here today. But God. basically, I keep track what? of, I keep track of all the shows that are on my radar that I see calls for. I and there's a column for the name of the show, the date that the piece, the the deadline for submission, and any details about um, what the submission needs to entail, the cost. Um, the dates of the show, the date that you need to drop the work off, the date that you need to pick the work up. And I just kind of you add to it as you go. And then you see that these things are coming up on your radar and um, you apply it the last minute. <laughs> That's the secret sauce. So I'm the opposite. You know what I do? I take a screenshot of all the, <laughs> the details. And then when I'm going through my photos, I go, oh, yeah, there's one. I just can't be as organized. I, I mean, I am organized in some ways, but I just can't. I don't know what it is. I just well, don't have it in me. We should grab yes. our guest because actually we should. <laughs> very, very she organized. Help. She could probably help with. She this. can help with that. A lot of things. Um, we have Susan Washington visiting with us today, and I'm going to grab Susan. Not really, but you know what I mean. I've just Actually, invited her on. You are you are the organized one. I'm the disorganized one. I wonder if she has advice to kind of, I don't know, make make me feel better. <laughs> there she is. We're gonna talk about spreadsheets. We're gonna oh, talk Susan, about spreadsheets. Welcome. <laughs> thank oh, thank you. you. Thank you for being willing to be postponed after we were supposed to chat a few weeks ago, and you were able to to find another date to come on with us, which we really appreciate. No problem. I should uh, make no problem. Mention, no problem. Actually, we, um, we may get a first... little bit of, um, there might be a little bit of construction noise. Maybe. It's been off and on. So just, just you know, bear with us. Okay. But yeah, thank you for coming back for us. <laughs> so, so for those of you who no don't problem. know Susan, we were just meeting her for the first time too. But Susan, I have, you've been on my radar for a long time. I've been following you on social media for quite a while. Good. And then I made the connection when our mutual friend, Rena Diana, was showing with you this summer in Baltimore, right? And she reached right out to us and she said, right. oh, you need to get Susan on No Brush Required. And I was like, yeah, we actually, we really do. And so the timing was perfect because we wanted Rain to talk great. about your art. We wanted to talk about this brilliant publication that um, has just so many great ideas and, and supports for artists in it. Um, but should we just do a quick little start? We like sometimes our, our guest artists to just give themselves a quick little intro because not everybody will know where you are and who you are and what kind of art you make. Okay. And that, yeah. Yes. I'm an artist first, right? Painter first. Um, yeah, I have a studio in Baltimore. I'm a painter. I do large abstract paintings. Actually, right now I'm doing a series of small paintings for the holidays. Um, I grew up in New York City, though, and I came from a family of artists. My dad, my godmother, so I was always involved in art. Grew up in the city, did a quick stop in uh, the Poconos. I went to art school at 42. <laughs> I got that at 44. <laughs> And I'm proud about that. Yeah. And um, I, my background, really, I was working in the city in fashion and advertising for 25 years before I showed my art. So I always did it, but I kind of hit it, put it in the basement, never showed it to anybody. So I always said, well, my peers were out there and they had the guts to go after what they wanted and, and become painters. Um, I was working in the corporate world. But that gave me the experience 
experience now to sell my art and I'm paying it forward. So yeah, I have a large studio, a thousand square foot studio in um, Baltimore. I, I know. That came with the whole package. That was the reason why I moved. My husband has a business. They were moving up to uh, Baltimore and uh, well, yeah, down to Baltimore. I was having, not having it, not having it. Didn't like it. So says, come on, just give it a try. And I kept on coming back. And the more mm -hmm. I came back, the more it reminded me of New York City in the 80s, like this roar creative energy and then they came out and say okay just to like get you over we'll give you a studio space indefinitely so i got the studio is space. This, I'm like okay i'm coming is so, it in your it. home or is it there. outside of your home your thousand square feet outside of my home it, it's okay. about a mile and a half <laughs> That's from my easy. House. yes <laughs> But it's great because I always worked in my, I always had studios in my houses, you know, so just having that differentiation, you know, I go in in the morning, eight o'clock, I have my day, I, I work till five o'clock, yeah. it just keeps me on my routine and everything. And I do have some small things. Today I'm at right. home because my puppy had surgery, so I'm kind of keeping an eye on her. But, good, um, good. Yeah. Good, yeah. good, She's good. good. She's good. Right. Just gotta keep it from being too hyper. I know they always tell you have to rest and not jump. Yeah. It's like, yeah, right. <laughs> it's not it's not possible. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, you've got a piece. So, oh yeah. sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Just, I know we gotta get the hand raising. We're system. eager. We're really we eager. Are, I, I, like I wanna talk I wanna talk about your art. <laughs> I wanna talk about that you grew up in New York City. <laughs> that just you know I'm yes. We should. Yeah, that connection and, yeah during, during that time, that time too i think you Which mentioned the city was very different back then and it was it was grubby and grotty and yeah. i had like a friend who got stabbed in the 80s and another and one beautiful. who got shot by a bb gun like just oh. it was just it's not like what we saw tamara it was mm -hmm. kind of a scary place so but different. yeah the, it really impacted the way that you create which is so exciting right? like all of that you know, yeah i mean you know you grow up with it every single day i mean it's ingrained in you and i've tried doing different things i just don't want to do it i love i mean not all my work has information from the city in it it's the surfaces that i love you know sitting on the train going into a club and just taking in all this this collective surface randomness it's just it is. It's so beautiful to me you know i, I don't know i just um, no, they, yeah and I love your new works, Barbara, by the way. Yeah. We bonded over a blick bag. <laughs> I need to, I tell you, I need to go back just to collect more stuff. Because, yes. Well, no, not just to collect more stuff. I mean, I loved it. But when now you go back, like when you do the kind of work that we do, which is incorporating, you know, different paper um, collage mm -hmm. materials, you're on the lookout all the time. And so you look at what somebody else might look at as garbage and going, oh, my gosh, that could yeah. be pretty sensational to... <laughs> to add right yeah did you see my post did you see my post the other day when i was cleaning out the studio so i finished a couple of commissions in my in caustics and i, I was like cleaning yes. the floor and i had a pile this big of garbage <laughs> and i couldn't throw it out like i had to look through everything because you have these random you yes. know you, you take paint put it on something stick it on something else and it it's does. like it becomes gold it really does so I have this great bag of stuff that I will use, yes. and, you know, it just right. recycles a lot of it. And it sounds well, weird, we, but it's, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We did find accidents, ourselves looking you know? at, they're not called billboards. What do you call them? The leaflets, the paper, things that people big, plaster. But big though, like the, yeah. the posters that they put up on. They plaster all over construction sites. And so we, we were starting to look at those and we yeah. do have another artist friend who visited New York with us last year, um, mm -hmm. Bibi Ginalot, who, was collecting all of those papers and rolling them up and shipping them home with her back to California because she wanted to use them for, you know, business. Oh, yes. yes, I know who you're talking about. Yes. So we yes. saw, yeah, we saw yes, all this yes. and we thought, oh, well, from online. like we both I came with that. like little carry on bags and just like, how do you explain this going through security, <laughs> bringing back garbage. And then we yeah. were thinking, well, what if somebody's like peed on something? It was on the <laughs> sidewalk. <laughs> and, like they could have, I mean, <laughs> Or we come back with like Which is possible. Yes. or something like that. But nah. anyways, missed opportunity. Well, next time. Well, no, next time. Next time. Just, well, oh, yes. I mean, another that will be happening. Yes, that's.
Yeah. I think that's a definite. I think two times in a row makes it an annual event. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Yeah. It does. Um, so we do tattoos. You, right? you I can't. Mine's on my legs. Really so. hard to. Oh, I no, can't even really show her. Can't do it. I can't. Oh, I can't. Yeah. Oh, well, there, there we go. She's upside down. Yeah. Right, so, oh, yeah. Nice. They're both in very nice. hard to show like, spots. I, I can't. I'm not. I'm not, if I was a rocket, I could. Is that going to be a, um, an annual thing? My leg up. <laughs> there has already been conversation about going back to the same artist and continuing it on. Yeah. Adding to it. We spoke when we were in the tattoo parlor with him. We were talking about that. So, yeah. Anyway. Okay. Interesting. Um, what do we show? What do we want to dive into? We want to talk about this phenomenal book. Mm -hmm. You want to. So, and how this, this that is, came about. This is, this is a book, The Art of Selling Art, Empowering Artists for Financial Freedom, um, that Susan has written. Is it self-published or it is, which is even more brilliant. Yes, it is. <laughs> like you did it everything from start to finish. Well, let me tell you, this, this is the hardest thing I've okay. ever done. Yeah. Really. It, it's been five years in the making. Yeah. And it's one of the hardest things I've ever done. It's you know especially self-publishing and then marketing marketing the book is different from marketing your i mean you know there there's a lot of similarities but learning how everything works within that field is completely different so that was another learning curve mm -hmm. and plus i give myself deadlines so for months i was no i have to stay up till three o'clock in the morning because this is not done and i was just really tough on myself because so I had what, a deadline. what I was the what was like so, the impetus yeah, to really, do this like what what was that little switch that went off that made you think I need to write this book? Um, after I dropped out of college, I had a lot of people asking me to help them sell their art. And um, a lot of friends were coming to me and we'd sit down and I'd give them ideas and tell them what to do. Most of the time it was like, no, I don't want to do all that work. I'm like, okay, then you're not going to sell all your art. But I just felt at that point, Mm -hmm. that I really wanted to pay it forward. You know, I had this opportunity to work in an industry where I learned a lot. And I, I just, I, I, I'm interested in it. I'm interested in selling my art too, you know, that whole process. So um, I started making uh, a running list of things I wanted to talk about. And over five years, I was growing this list, but mm -hmm. I had no idea how to write this book. My husband kept on telling me, make the chapters first and then take all the information and put it in under the chapters. But of course, I didn't want to listen. So a couple of years later, it still went on. I was collecting all the information. And finally, I thought, you know, I really got to do this. It's like five years already. This is not like me. Let's just get it out. And so I made my chapters and I started putting the information under. And the book kind of started writing itself. It just became so easy to put together and plus it's a little bit different because i'm sharing a lot of examples of what i do and stories because i don't know i have read a lot of books i've probably read every book there is on how to sell your art but not a lot are written by artists who are actually mm -hmm. still practicing and working every day and um i just thought the best way to share a lot of the information mm -hmm. was to share exactly what i do you know yeah. and and yeah. So a lot of and, that is in the but book. But the thing is, too, it's you've, you've written it in a very easy to read and digest and work your way through, which I really find valuable because a lot of information, a lot of there's a lot of people who share information in the world, but it's not in a way that's actionable. They don't share it in an actionable way. So I found reading through the chapters, I could identify areas and not all of them because, you know, this is. 20 years of work, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And to actually implement all of this is a, is a big, big job. But it felt like there were things that I could identify in my own strategies that were lacking that were um, right. low hanging fruit in terms of my amount of effort. You know, oh, I can tackle this. This is something that I've already got in place and I can just do this one, two, three, these three small things and that's gonna elevate what I'm doing, which I found just really, really helpful. Um, the fact that you're an artist and the fact that you're talking about selling your work online those two things together are very unique because lots of people talk about selling online and they're not artists and lots of artists talk about selling and right? working with galleries but they're not 
they don't have up to date, up to the moment advice about how to do it online. So that for me right. was made it a wonderful, a wonderful read. And uh, I've got lots of highlights and mm -hmm. flags in there to work through. Yeah. And it's the kind of book you need to read more than once. I, Speaking for myself, because I read it the first time and just was like, oh my gosh, it's like talk a block. Is a lot of the emails I'm getting is they're saying I, mm -hmm. I read it once mm -hmm. and now I'm sitting with a highlighter and reading it again, which is really, really great mm -hmm. because you're finding information that's useful. Right. You know, it might not apply to everybody. And like, uh, tomorrow, I know you're on your game with your marketing and your online work and stuff. So, I mean, that means a lot coming from you, but uh, I'm glad you could find mm -hmm. some things that mm -hmm. are useful. And that was the point, you know. I mean, if you could mm -hmm. sell one more painting from it or learn a couple of things that mm -hmm. well and i find the other thing that the thing that's the most challenging for a lot of us is a mindset around selling um right if we don't come from a sales background oh yeah. whatever stories we tell ourselves about not wanting to be i don't want to denigrate anybody here but i don't want to look come off like a, Push a pushy sales person yeah. um you know i'm constantly talking about myself and my work and and there was you address quite a bit of that in here but also just seeing the fact that you have overcome that or maybe that hasn't been a big issue for you in your art career because you had experience mm -hmm. um in another way i don't know if you could just talk a little bit about that i'm trying to think i don't i no i don't think it was something i had to overcome and and maybe that's because i didn't spend my whole you know early years making and and trying to show my art and exhibit it I, I i was told early on they're not your babies make them and let them go so i mean they're important what i do in my studio mm -hmm. is just very personal very autobiographical and private but i i could differentiate that versus putting on another hat and going out and selling my art mm -hmm. and i kind of maybe that's from my background but you know the good news is that it's mm -hmm. successfully working for me and I just feel that people who choose to do it and want to do it and I totally get not everybody is into that and they don't want to do it themselves and that's mm -hmm. fine but it can work you know um I just um I think we were talking about was. email lists well go ahead talk about each email yeah <laughs> you know we were talking about <laughs> Well, no, I, I mean, like, you're not the only one. There's a lot of people like, uh, you don't want to feel like you're too salesy or, you know, it's like, here's my art, buy it. But people <laughs> sign up for your email list. They sign up because they want to know what's going on. They want to be part of your life. They want to see the successes. And I think it's a great opportunity for people who know you to, you know, keep on track on what's going on in your mm -hmm. career but also people to get to know you and you know mm -hmm. they're there because they want to be for the most part and there's so many ways you could communicate i mean just not sharing everything on social media but saving some things for your email you know it doesn't have to be here there's a painting for sale it could be this is what's going on in the studio this week and i want to share it with everybody or you know a show you have that somebody in los angeles can't get to because it's in new york but they want to mm -hmm celebrate mm -hmm. you and be part of your success too yeah so I no i, I, I mean i i do an email once a month and i used to do them more Same. regularly but i had a hard time sticking to a more regular <laughs> schedule because it would be like oh my gosh it's time to write another email and already yeah, yeah already <laughs> um I know, but yeah. but i find it's yeah. slow growing yeah. um it's a long game i mean i'm not paying i i pay i watch numbers but i don't really worry about numbers if you understand what i mean like you need to measure things because you need to know yes. whether your efforts are you know there's any return on your investment at all if nobody's signing up ever um so i do exactly. keep an eye on that it would be nice to see more growth and i i think i probably just need to share that more but i i have a feeling on instagram every time you post something with a link that the algorithm doesn't show it to anybody that's just my own personal feeling about these things. Yeah. And that's right. this true. week. Yeah. That's true. So, uh, Susan, are you finding your email list? Like, because uh, I'm one of those artists who my website is. <laughs> don't even go there. Uh, it's something that I need to one day work on. Um, 
but so I don't have an email list that I've generated. But do you find for yourself that this is something that that does bring um, more people to you or expands kind of your reach in a way that social media can't? Well, oh yeah, hmm. it's it's completely different from social media. It's a different way, and and I, I believe in having all those eggs in many baskets because yeah. you know that's diversify, how right? Diversify. Work. but um, yeah, it brings in, yeah, yeah. I mean, I will get people who come from Instagram and social media and will come to my website and sign up. But then I have people mm -hmm. who are not even following me on social media who will come across my website and sign up. So. You know, I share a lot of things on social media, but it's really important for me to update my everybody, you know, via email. So and, and yeah, I do get a lot of people coming and signing up. So it, it's it's a really important element to. What OK, Barb. I don't know what it's going to take. You know what it's going to take? It's going to take a giant blizzard happening what? here at some point in the winter where I just sit at the computer and just hammer it out i mean i've done it before like that's the stupid thing is yeah. is i can do it i can populate a website i can put the pictures in i can write i just don't want to spend my time doing it right now it's almost like you know it's like i have to do it i should do it so i'm not going to do it I know. we'd rather be painting and in or, our studio even, trust like me I but enjoy, I I yeah, just, I enjoy you know, the whole social sell. media thing too. To me, that's more fun because it's instant, right? You can communicate with somebody, get, right. you can get, get feedback fairly right. quickly. So as Tamara said, it's a long game, right? With the website and the, the email list, but yeah. 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 But, yeah. You can like social media too much though. Yeah, no, no I'm, not, I'm, not say, I'm, not, I'm not saying that I like it too much, but I, I find that more, <laughs> I don't feel like I'm shouting into the void, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, well, maybe I am shouting into the void, but uh, yeah. Okay, stay tuned. One day it'll happen. So, 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 so on your website, you don't have a sign up for your email. You don't have an email list. I do have one of those things. Okay. But I honestly, Susan, I have not been able. Here's the other stupid thing. I have not been able to actually get into my website to do any 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 changes on it because I seem to not know my password anymore and it's so embarrassing don't make me say it but I need yeah. to call GoDaddy and just say can you help me get on track and they are really good like I did actually yeah. have a phone call with them and they yeah. just walked me through it yeah. I'm sure I'm not unusual I'm sure there's lots of other people like me out there right <laughs> yes. who have been delinquent yeah. you know it's like not doing homework yeah. it yeah. takes me back to school i feel like i've just let it slide and uh there's no catching up but of course i could catch up yeah really maybe we need a weekly accountability call oh, we spend an hour on zoom every week just quietly getting stuff done and maybe chat with each other while we do it okay oh god look at that, that that's how you feel about spending an yeah. hour with me My no friends. no i would love to do that but you will, and you'd probably, you'd probably keep me honest. And, and you know, I know it wouldn't take much to get it back on track. It's just that, what is that? Procrastination? It's yeah. Procrastination? Avoid it. Yes, it is. But having that accountability, procrastination, no avoidance, because you just totally don't want to do it. But um, having that accountability, it could be really, really helpful. And then as you account these issues write them down and then on that call you could just discuss okay. it and get any help you might need <laughs> okay okay well, well, bars off, bars bars off the hot but, but i know i'm on the hot seat but bars off the hot seat. Here. we don't want to hear any more about this we want to pick her brain <laughs> i i've been mean i okay here's a switch i'm switching subjects i want to ask you about sachi art because that is something that floated across my radar like a couple of years ago, and then like with all the other things that float past my radar, it kind of went, I, I actually think I have an account there, but I've never done anything with it. So you talk a, a fair bit about Sachi art in your book. And so it's been a yes. good thing for you, yeah. I take it. Oh, it's been a really good thing, yeah. I mean, I've tried, like I said in the book too, I've tried Art Finder, I mean, I'm not gonna throw out, but mm -hmm. I've tried a lot of the other platforms. Um, I just felt there was this big disconnect, mm -hmm. like there was nobody behind 
the, you know, these pro, these websites and everything. And I just felt when I went on board with Sachi Art, even though there are a lot of artists on there, mm. there are a lot of curators and um, everything goes on. Somebody sees one of those curators to take a look at. And I just felt a connection with it. Um, and like I said, it's just not, mm -hmm. uh, I try to share this, but I don't know, it doesn't connect. I find you can't just throw all your work up out there and walk away like anything else. Like, like I said in the book, you know, share it onto um, Instagram, cross post, tag them in it. Um, and I, I think you'll gain traction like that, but it's been really, really good. And yes, read I the read the book. You <laughs> see the story about the website? She's asking the question because lots of people who are watching might not have read the book. You didn't do her homework? My God, Susan, I would have been up all night no, last night. I didn't mean to repeat right. the story. I, that's okay. Because there'll be people who are watching who don't know the story. Thank you, Tamara. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> No, I was gonna. All right, I forgot there are people watching right now, but um, <laughs> it was like a coffee clutch. Um, yeah, so there was this. I was posting, it was, I was on there a year, I hadn't sold anything, and I was doing everything I said. And um, one day I got a call in, well, actually, an email like 12 emails that I sold pieces on there, and I yeah. thought it was a glitch in the system so I actually emailed Rebecca and I said what's going on I think there's a glitch and so she says let me check on it and she emailed me back no no glitch congratulations and then this really nice gentleman said he just met with his wife they sat down and looked and he bought seven more paintings and it was like Lord it was like I know all wow. it works and that was like after that I realized that yeah you know this could be a viable mm -hmm revenue stream mm -hmm. for me and it has been ever since and that was nine yeah. years ago maybe after, after i Eight read that part of the book i did yeah. a little research online and there's some there's some recent blogs and and things i've read about strategies for being successful because it is some people some people are very down on it because um you, you know if you got yeah. in on the ground floor when they were showing when there weren't as many people if not weren't as many artists it was easier to get your work shown but there are ways to increase your odds especially as a brand new artist showing on sachi um like put, making sure when you first create your account um putting up as many pieces of high quality and similar or related types of work as possible because the curators are going through every week and they're finding new people and so if you're only putting up a piece or two and those pieces yeah. don't look like they belong together there's not going to be enough um momentum in your account for a curator to announce you because they're constantly showing new work mm -hmm. so that was a good piece of advice right well well right. they do you do the feature every week, every Monday. So they do look through. So I, I do recommend mm -hmm. putting up several images at once. Right. Because you don't right. want to have just one or two pieces up. But like I shared too, I think every week you could, should be consistently mm -hmm. adding another piece or two to it because that gives you mm -hmm. another opportunity to be a featured in the new this week collection, which I just got an email wow. they're featuring me next week in, which yeah. is really, really great. It, it's very helpful. And if you only if you put everything on yeah. it, oh, well, this yeah. is true. Right. Pace it, um, yeah, pace it out. So. But you just and what did you just That's post just this morning? Experience. I'm not just looking behind you on my computer. There was something on Artsy, right? Or oh yes, right. But, yeah. Wait, so I was just curious. Baltimore. The reason why I'm curious is because I just got yes. an email this morning that suggests that I join Opulent Art and Artsy, and I have never really followed either of those before and, I, and and then i saw your post and i'm like oh artsy i guess i need to take a look at this mm -hmm. well artsy okay. is geared for galleries really um artists individual artists oh, okay. can't go on it's the gallery and, and sometimes i do my mm -hmm. backwards research i talked about this too is i'll look for the i was doing that originally looking for the galleries that were on artsy that my work would fit into because i wanted to get on artsy but um Winkle Gallery now they're on board with it. Yes. He did a beautiful viewing yeah. room. Mm -hmm. I was really happy with what he did. So that was exciting. that was cool. that really and how long is that up for a yeah. week or yeah. a month or do you know? Mm -hmm. That's um 
That's great. I think it's and two they have weeks. A lot I think it's two work, weeks. And they have a, a nice yeah. amount of written information so that people who were maybe discovering you for the first time. Yeah, I was really did a good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which I like, it gave a lot of insight behind the New York surface theme in my work as well. And I, I think when I saw the images up with my work, it was, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. could kind of see the relation oh, there. absolutely. I think I felt. And you also so, were talking about um, in your book, that I read <laughs> that you that you do that you were on, like corporate like um, getting in one of your recommendations was was looking at ways of getting into like hotel spaces and and sort of um, convention centers and things like that which is a different it's maybe something that not a lot of us have thought about so that that was kind of a cool question too yeah. how did yeah. that kind of pan out for you yeah yeah the um, there's a lot of different ways. I mean, I've gotten hospitality projects through Sachi Art. I've gotten hospitality projects through Indie Walls is another great website too. Um, uh, Union Square has, uh, they I sold so many images and they were printed large scale images. And they're in all the suites at Union mm -hmm. Square right. Hotel, um, W Hotel that, in New York. That was through Sachi. That was through Sachi so, Art. And wow. um, I reached out to a lot of... Totally worth it. Yeah. yeah. And then the, mm -hmm. the designer list that I talk about doing, you know, there's a lot mm -hmm. of de designers mm -hmm. who specialize in hospitality. An introduction, doing a catalog, mm -hmm. sending so they have something physical. You know, there's a, a lot of ways to get through. Yeah. yeah. Right. But everything takes right. time. Everything takes time. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that project was a year in the working. So one of the so, questions I asked you on, on email, um, you know, this is like the top three sort of thing. So if you were talking to, imagine we're all a bunch of emerging artists that you're talking to, and we're trying to improve our visibility, get our work out in front of more people. What are you taught? What, you know, what are, what are kind of three bang for your buck things that people could do almost right away to sort of improve on, on what they're already doing? What they're already or if doing. they're doing nothing, uh, yeah. um, just make assumptions about yeah. what they're already doing. Say they're, they're just getting out there. High impact. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're doing nothing, it, okay, okay. If you've got some kind of following mm -hmm. and everything, I think consistency is really important. Consistency with posting. And I have played around with this, and I have gone a few days without posting. Down. It just brings me right down. And then it takes like several days to get back up there of consistent posting. So um, I know everybody hates doing that, but I really think that if you plan out some of your posts and you get your photographs and your content together, um, being consistent posting every day and that's is the, really, really that's Instagram really for you? Are you doing um, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest? How many platforms are you on? I have, I'm just doing right now Instagram. I'm just doing Instagram. Um, there's a lot of people who have success on right. Facebook. It's not my market. It's mm -hmm. just that it, I don't do well on there. Um, I have a Pinterest, but I'm never very active on there. So, uh, and threads. I don't know. I, 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 kind of, how do you I like it. For me, it has no pressure. I find Instagram, I feel a little bit more performance anxiety. Not, I, 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 I'm. I'm more attuned to how my posts are doing and whether people are engaging with them on threads. I don't really give a crap. I just, you know, throw something out there. And a couple, right, right. A, a couple of posts that I put out this week, I got a, yeah. a huge response to, and I was like, well, that's, that's really interesting. And then you ask another question another day and nobody, nobody. says anything. So <laughs> Cricket. Um, I, the thing I like about it, Susan, is I have met yeah different people than I was meeting in my Instagram world, which is interesting because Instagram will supposedly you automatically yeah. follow all the same people that you follow on Instagram. But of course, how those interact, if those people aren't getting onto threads right away, you're not interacting with them, the algorithms dropping them out of who you see. So yeah. I've actually connected with um, quite a few new people that I've had conversations with. So in terms of trying to increase community that's great because that's i find great, on yeah. instagram really really hard to break out of the silo that the algorithm sees me in so yeah dream of consciousness yeah. whatever yeah. over there um 
Yeah, yeah, I gotta work harder on that one and, and threads. Um, I think the other thing is to, um, I talk mm -hmm. about this mm -hmm. one a lot, is become a storyteller. I think telling stories is not a bad thing. I think it connects you with your tribe mm -hmm. and the people who are out there looking for you. It makes you real to people who might want to buy art or considering art. Um, I like breaking it up. Like if you're actually telling a story on Instagram, I'm talking about Instagram now because you're talking about followers. Um, put emojis in there. Yay, I like emojis. <laughs> Make sure you do I the heart the right way, not like I did this. Yeah. It breaks it up. It breaks it up. Yeah. I think people, yeah. it, it stops people and gets them to look. So um, I, I would definitely say do that. Tell stories, you know, related to what you're doing or what's inspiring your work. Mm -hmm. And um, be authentic. And I say that because, you know what, there's so many artists who are all doing all these great things, but there's only one you. And we all have different things about us. And I think being your real self, authentic, and, and putting that out there in the best way possible mm -hmm. will attract those people who, mm -hmm. you know, you're, we're different. So yeah, yeah, let that fly. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, that's my thing. Yeah. If you want to do something yeah. place to start, because there still are, there still are a lot of artists who just don't want to do that on, on social media. So they're, they're keeping everything to themselves, you know, which is, uh, you know, yes. you, you have to yes. think about that generous, that, that mindset of generosity, like be generous with what you're showing, be generous with what you're sharing. And it does come yeah. back. I, I know Tamara, we've talked about this. Like, it's like the more you do, or you try this or you try that, and then you get some, uh, either a connection or a response, or it leads to other things. You know, one door opens, another door opens, another door mm -hmm. opens. If you keep it all to yourself, nothing happens. No one's going to knock on your door and say, hey, I hear you're an artist. I'd like to see everything you've made. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I'm safe. If you don't yeah, there's home, a way of doing do it, it with, without sounding like braggadocious, right? <laughs> like you just do it. Yeah. Because you're yeah. enthusiastic. If it, let your enthusiasm, your enthusiasm um, come out. And then other people get enthusiastic, right? It's contagious. Right. And sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Well, and yeah. you know, you do talk about collaborations too, and that's something that Barb and I both are big fans of is collaborative work. And you had a couple, there are quite a few different places in the book where you mentioned that, you know, collaborating, you, there's a section on collaborating with influencers and bloggers who might open up uh, a different market to you than people th that are already seeing. Uh, have you had success doing that? Have you, had, are there specific instances of I've collaborated not with influencers, mm -hmm. but with designers and other artists. And, um, you know, you could look at having success and as one thing and track it in sales, but also in right. the people you meet behind it. You know, there's different ways we, and um, a lot of times that's how it's come back is the connections mm -hmm. I've made over time doing that. You know, but um, there are ways to go and find influences who are higher up there that you could collaborate with or pay for right. if you want to right. do that. Type I used to work in the fitness space. Um, I still do, but not online anymore. And the word influencer was actually a really loaded term after a while, yeah. <laughs> because what would happen is companies would see you as an influencer and they would offer you um, you know, a box of protein bars to do a post and to run a campaign for them. And so after a while, the whole idea of becoming an influencer mm -hmm. meant um, not making any money, but, you know, having lots of free samples delivered yeah, to your of door. The, of, of like uh, cardboard Stop. tasting yeah. protein bars. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I yeah. I mean, I can't even think of influencers anymore. It's I I don't get influencers popping up on my feed maybe because I just don't interact, but yeah, I do get I'll get stupid things. I'll get fitness people contacting me and it's like, "I'm an artist. You don't want me." So Why do you but want me? No. To but Barb, they contact you because you post you post on, yeah. on your stories. You do post workout stuff. Oh, sometimes. Oh, rarely, right? Yeah. Do you think that that's why they mm -hmm. want me to Yep. That's odd. Yep. They really they, they, they you post a couple times a week af, after your workouts in your stories. You can see yeah. that. Okay, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Another revenue stream. <laughs> the old lady at F forty five, that's me. 
Um, so one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, Susan, is something. Uh, so you you do talk about SEO, search engine optimization. Okay. Oh, I know it's a thank naughty you. word. Thank Sorry. you for doing that. <laughs> Say, explain what that is. Um, and it's a lot. Of, it's something that a lot of people we know about, and we're like, oh, I don't want to have to do that. Um, but I asked you in an email, you know, about YouTube, and because YouTube is. The, the second biggest search engine out there to Google. And so I know a lot of artists are starting to do work on YouTube because people will search for things there and they will find you. And, and have you, are you, I didn't go and look, do you have a YouTube channel? I do have a YouTube channel. I do have one for my art. I do post on there, but mm -hmm. I don't put all of my energy there. I think it's a great way to go and you can really build up there, but it's just, you know, I, I, I don't take advantage of that. I mean, I'm working with Instagram. I'm actually I saw another. Have you seen that? No, no. With Amazon Live. Yeah, Amazon Live. Look it up. It's for um, influencers, but there's another one for creators and people who sell too. Um, I did into a deep dive, so I'm not going to talk about it, but look it up and check it out because I think that might be something. Gwyneth Paltrow was doing something on that. It, That's how I saw it. Who, is it like having a channel? What? Would you have a channel? You would have a channel and you would live stream or broadcast on there? Whoops, did we lose you? Yeah, you're okay. yeah. still here. You're still here. You froze for a second. I put it on do not disturb, but I had a call coming through. Sorry about that. Um, I think you have to have a page on Amazon with your products, which sounds really salesy, but I don't know. I found the live thing very interesting. Probably a whole different audience on there. Yeah. But um, I can, I, like I said, I got to do a deep dive into it. it. It was worth, I think, doing that to see what it was about, but I can't talk anymore because I don't, I didn't have time yeah. for that yet. Oh, oh so you yeah. haven't signed up for it. You've just started to no, take a no, look No, 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 I just started reading it, yeah. But um, yeah, YouTube I think is very valuable. I just have not, you know, I do have my channel on there, but I, yeah. I don't do much with it. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. And I know- and To pick and choose, right? What you research, there's so many rabbit holes you end up going down. You go on to look for one thing and next thing you know, you're, you know, a hundred mm -hmm. miles away diving into something you didn't intend to so yeah. but, I, I think it's important to to decide what how much time and effort you want to put into things and be realistic yeah. about what you can actually do so you have this book your book has exactly. so many great ideas for things one can do um but if i'm not going to be able to consistently follow through with you know starting start if i choose 20 of them and i can really only consistently keep up with and follow two, three, or four of them, right. that would be better for me than to try to do everything Absolutely. else. And get yeah. Over yeah. yeah, yeah. Break it up. And that's why I'm not active on Pinterest or YouTube, because I have these other things working for me. And, and I think another thing is to, to be ahead, like what's going to happen next, you know, keeping up with the algorithms, checking out this Amazon Live to see if it's anything and, and you know, being ahead of, ahead of the flow. It's yeah, helpful. Yeah, sure. For sure. Should we open up to questions? I, people have been watching and there haven't been many comments. If anybody has a question, you can either type it in the comment box or you can hit the little question sticker at the bottom of your screen and type your question in there. Then I can pull it up on the screen and everybody can see it and it doesn't disappear if you have any questions for Susan. Um, I, I think I'm dying to talk about what you do, like with your work. I mean, your book is brilliant too, but I'm like, my God, a fellow collager oh, yes. is doing things that, that I like look at and go, oh my, I wish I could see this up close. And and uh, what mediums do you use to stick everything down and like just all that good stuff. I want to talk to you about this. I started doing these encaustic pieces for mm -hmm. the holidays. And usually every year, right before Black Friday, I release so many smalls. I don't normally do smalls. So it's kind of, and like you were talking about before I got on, doing the small pieces and then going to the large. Mm -hmm. It's like the opposite. Yeah. So I started working on these fashion inspired pieces, but I'm coming and, and looking at these models who are no longer modeling or who are you know the supermodels from the 80s yeah. and 90s mm -hmm. who are yeah. coming back up and i'm like just so interested in why like the designers aren't hiring them and and this whole age thing yes. and so now i'm 
rolling into the new year, starting this with, I'm doing a series of 10 six by five foot paintings, and they're all gonna be fashion themed, but have these models, and they're be, gonna be very collage-like. It might be an older arm with a newer face or vice versa, but it's gonna talk about age, and like Cindy Crawford said, said not having a shelf life, but mm -hmm. include the design elements and the mm -hmm. beauty there, but also mm -hmm. all that subway, sonic, graffiti, mm -hmm. and go game, collaborative marks that you might remember going through the subway station, seeing these big posters, mm -hmm. these fashion posters with all this stuff on. Yeah. So uh, that's kind of what I'm looking at. And um, I use, what I use right now, and I will continue to use is, um, I love r &F oil sticks. Have yes. you ever used them? Yes, but not not enough. Oh, gotta have a big tub of them. It's like expensive lipstick on canvas. So mm -hmm. I love working with that. And um, uh, just everything, charcoal, literally anything I get my hands on. Like, yeah, like you said, you walk face. in the street, you find something. Yeah. You know, what's this yeah. rock gonna look like if I scrape mm -hmm. it on the surface? You know, and, and I do do that. I get old nails and I'll make the thick surface and just scratch into it and, mm -hmm. you know, put things down. I use Golden's Medium, put stuff down. Um, a lot of times I'll do image transfers on mm -hmm. like the big Kate Moss one I do, did, which I'm going to re revisit when I do this series. Um, I started printing out to make this five by six foot painting and I started running out of ink. <laughs> But I decided not to change the ink because I thought it was really cool that it was coming out yeah. this really faded color. And then I did a transfer of that. And yeah, she might have been a little green, but it was really, really, I think, an interesting effect. I but always I, think I love what, making mistakes. Yeah. I was just going to say, I always think when something like that happens, it's meant to be that way. Oh, yeah. Right. So when you're working with a material and it's like, oh, it's not doing what it's supposed to do, it's generally doing something better that you right. couldn't have been so I love that. Yeah. I yeah. love that. And that's what I call the canvas talking to you. You know, you just have to listen and go with it sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that was the biggest liberating point for me was when I realized that there are no mistakes. You no. can pull it apart. You could cover up. And for quite a few years when I first started professionally, I was always like, oh my God, if I do this, is it going to mess up the painting? And like, so what? So well, yeah. and that was the best, you know, you, you learn so much from that. It's just fantastic. So, yeah. so you're, you're, um, I, I presumably, is it the last layer would be like, if you're doing encaustic, covering everything with a layer of wax, is that how it works? Or are you well, kind of working the encaustic in as you go? For the small pieces, the big pieces are going to be oil on canvas and my normal uh, mediums. But for the small encaustics, they're all layered. Okay. So, I tape up the sides of the small board, put a couple of layers of encaustic, fuse it, do paper and, and scratches in, and then another layer of encaustic and fuse that. So it was fun, but I'm over it now. I did 17 <laughs> or 18 of them, I think. Yeah. I need to go back to my big pieces and yeah. my messy, you yeah. Know, yeah. 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 Were you not? Yeah. We, had, we did have a question about oil sticks and and sometimes people want to get more technical information than we have time to give but typically you use them as a last layer and they take a little while to dry is that the, con I, the, the concern i do because yes because i use mixed media you mm -hmm. don't want to put acrylic over it you yeah. can't put paper over it because it'll come through if you put paper on you have to seal it well before you put the oil stick unless you like that oil submerging through but um, yeah, it goes on last and they do take a long time. The uh, summertime, they dry very fast. It's great. In the wintertime, I have to throw the heat up. Like I have a commission now I have to deliver on Friday and the titanium white is not fully dried yet. So the studio heat is up to like 95, hoping it will, you know, start to dry and by then. Then do you, do you varnish that? Like when everything is dry, do you then do a layer of varnish or? I, I do, I do. I put a layer of varnish on that. So, and I'd have to go back to re-varnish it if it's not fully dry. Yeah. And are they talking days or weeks? Rena's asking how oh, long. Rena you know, wants to know. <laughs> well, it depends. If you do titanium, titanium white is probably, I think somebody else knows they could correct me, it's probably the longest, mm. it, it takes the longest for that to dry. 
and if it's cold in the studio, it could take two months to dry. Wow. You know, because you're not, if you're using oils, usually you mix oil with some kind of medium mm. to dry it out. But you use these sticks, yes, they're mixed with other things, but still, I like using them directly on the surface. So mm. it's, um, it takes a while. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, there could be I've played Sorry. around with using them with mixing them with cold wax or like they have their own blender sticks that you can take a chunk of yes. and mix them up yes. with a palette knife and then they will dry a little bit more quickly yeah yeah um i do put sometimes a little oil in japan dryer in there mm -hmm. and i let if i have to do that but for these works that i've been doing now it's mostly using you know as is right from the stick because they're all mixed media yeah i use it for writing and, and just adding a little bit more surface yeah right more and so these these new paintings these are you're quite excited about getting started on these what you said six by seven foot canvases six by five foot yeah that's my year you know i've been doing other things of course through the year and smaller pieces but i'm just really like i see it in my head which isn't really good because sometimes it doesn't come out as you see it but you just gotta go with the flow but just the whole I, narrative behind it i'm feeling very strongly about and i can visualize it so I'll i'm excited it i'm excited for you because as someone who yeah. i don't know if my sister's still on but marnie might remember uh my mom used to subscribe to vogue magazine and as a little girl the Vogue would arrive and I would take it and sit in the big chair in, in mom and dad's bedroom and just flip through pages when I was little to the point where I wanted to be a fashion designer. That's what I wanted more than anything. And I just kept this up for years. So that whole history with the supermodels and fashion and how yeah. important it was. And it just it's yeah. something that gets under your skin. Now, I couldn't. Yeah. Sew, it, it, so it tries me. You did. Yeah. Sew? No, oh, okay. I could not sew. Okay. <laughs> that, but I sketched, I just drew endlessly, you know, um, dresses and outfits and fashion illustration. And that's really, really what I wanted to do badly. Um, all that's through my what I loved. When I was in yeah. high school, I was in charge of the fashion club. And then I got a sewing machine. I used to take the bed sheet. Yes. <laughs> off the I bar. was reading this I about reading you. <laughs> And I used to make our clothes to go out clubbing. I mean, that was, I mean, maybe that's why I went into fashion. I wasn't designing clothes or anything. I was doing marketing or advertising, but I, I love that. And, and now in a way it's coming out now in this age yes. to have this special narrative to it. So, yeah. I love that it's all, all kind of coming full circle. I find yeah. that really yeah. fascinating. And, um, you know, at a particular point in your life, you have all of this history mm -hmm. and, to be able to draw from it and include it in what you're currently doing is really exciting. Yeah. And it's going to keep it's funny. you. It's very... uh, I was just going to say, you, you probably have enough just excitement and passion for this that you could go the next 12 months just creating these massive, wonderful pieces. I can't wait to okay. see them. I can't either. <laughs> I'll be your assistant if you need someone to come and help. Yes, I'd you be so can be <laughs> oh, that would be wonderful. That would be yeah, a fun it'll, it'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see if they come out like I'm envisioning and what I'm going to do after with them. But I'm, I'm there's always this change, this metamorphosis yeah. that goes on every so many years. And mm -hmm. I don't just set out, set out normally to say I'm going to do a new body of work and mm -hmm. do this, but it's just because I decided to do these small pieces and I've been working and, and researching for these that it just led me into this. And then getting older in age and, yes. and getting, you know, just like you say, full circle. It, yeah, absolutely. Anyways, I'm going to be the clock monster. Oh. Um, we are so close to the end. People have been asking the title of your book. We'll put it in the post, yeah, right? I'll put, put it all in the show notes. I'll link up um, Susan's Thank Instagram you. account and you guys can follow her her um her new images that she's going to be sharing in the new year hopefully or maybe some process shots as those those pieces come along yes um yes I and uh, anyways thank you great. so much thank susan it's been so thank nice you. to meet you and you've been so generous in what you shared in the book and what you shared with us today and um i thank loved you it. so much really appreciate I'm so glad we finally got to connect thank you i love what's going on thank behind you your head you. there too i'm assuming that's part of one of your paintings so yeah my Australian women painting, yeah. yep. <laughs>
Oh, love yeah. it, love it. All right. Thank you so much, ladies. All I right, appreciate thanks. it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We will catch you next Tuesday. Have a great rest of your week. Bye. Okay, bye. bye.